and uh, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me here. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here. So I'm going to tell, tell you about some both theoretical and experimental results that have been obtained in collaborations with colleagues in China. Actually, much, much of the theory that I'm, I'm going to discuss here was carried out by my student, Andrew Smith, who's here in the audience, though certainly we had important input from the group of Hai Tao Kwan in P Peking University. And then um, the experimental results all come from the group of Kihuan Kim at Tsinghua University, also, also in Beijing. Uh, so in reading over the, uh, or in looking at the list of people who are attending here, I realize this is, this is a fairly broad audience. Uh, some people are certainly are experts in fluctuation relations, other, other, other people maybe not as much. So uh, at the risk of annoying some of the experts, I've decided to make the presentation fairly, uh, at least the, of the theory, fairly pedagogical. So this is, this is my aim here is as much to present a kind of gentle introduction to some of the aspects of quantum uh, work relations um, as it is to present some new experimental and theoretical results. So with that in mind, let me jump into the question that's kind of at the heart of this talk, which is how do we define qu work in quantum mechanics? Um, and we've already heard that question raised in uh, Robert Alitsky's talk earlier. Uh, for open quantum systems, or in the, in the most general case, I think this remains an unanswered question. But for closed quantum systems, at least within the kind of fluctuation relation community, there seems to have formed a consensus around this so-called two-point measurement scheme. Maybe not everybody's, uh, not everybody's happy with this, but there is a consensus around it. So let me explain what that, uh, what that definition is. So the basic idea is the following. You have some quantum system here. I'm illustrating with the example of a particle in a box. Uh, you prepare the system in whatever way you wish. And then at some initial time, t equals 0, you'll make a measurement of the energy of the system. According to textbook quantum mechanics, this causes the wave function to collapse. So right after the measurement, you're going to be in some initial state, which is an eigenstate of the, uh, of the initial Hamiltonian, let's say the nth eigenstate. You then subject the system to some process. And by that, I mean you allow it to evolve under the time-dependent Schrodinger equation as you change some parameter of the Hamiltonian. So you're changing the Hamiltonian in a time-dependent way from some initial Hamiltonian HA to some final Hamiltonian HB. In this case, what you're doing is you're compressing the box. At the end of the process, the wave function is generically going to be in some superposition of energy eigenstates of the final Hamiltonian. And at this point, you come around and you make another projective measurement of the energy at the final time, and that causes the wave function to collapse to some eigenstate of the final Hamiltonian, let's say the nth eigenstate. And this is, of course, given by the usual, the probability for this to happen is given by the usual Born rule. And then the somewhat heuristic idea is, well, since, there's, since this is an isolated system, there's no energy exchanged with the heat path, let's just define the work uh, according to the, uh, using the first law, as the difference between the initial and final uh, initial and final energy. So the work is defined this way. So I'll, I'll refer to this as the two-point measurement scheme or the two-point measurement definition of work. And again, I want to uh, uh, emphasize here that these measurements are kind of standard textbook projective measurements that cause the wave function to collapse. I'm not trying to model the measurement process itself. And this has, been, uh, uh, this has been validated, or the classical version of this result has been validated in, num in a number of systems. In fact, we just heard about one of them uh, from Yuka Pekola. But an interesting development or an exciting development is that in the last few years, experimentalists have looked at uh, quantum, the quantum version of this, uh, uh, of, of this prediction. And the first experimental validation, to the best of my knowledge, came out about two years ago. This was in a collaboration between Hai Tao and Kihuan, Hai Tao Kwan and Kihuan Kim's groups, the, the groups that I mentioned earlier. Um, and they verified it using a, an, an ion trap. So the basic idea here is that the, uh, a, an ytterbium ion was trapped in a harmonic potential. It was prepared in an initial equilibrium state. And then the potential was simply translated at some velocity from an initial position to a final position. Projective energy measurements were made. And from that, the work distribution was, was, uh, uh, was obtained. And it was shown that, that, the, uh, that, that, that the prediction holds true. I'm not going to go into further details of this experiment, because I'll talk about the, uh, a later experiment in, in a moment. I should mention that in the time since then, there have been other. So there was a proposal to, do, uh, uh, to determine the work distribution by a kind of in, interferometric reconstruction, which I don't have time to go into. And I believe this was later implemented experimentally. And I just heard this morning that uh, we're going to hear about another, uh, uh, another um, 
uh, experimental test of this prediction in, in Juan Pablo's uh, Juan Pablo Paz's talk. This animation depicts the process used at Lincoln Laboratory to confine single atomic ions near chips. In an ultra-high vacuum system, a hot atomic vapor is created by heating metal in an oven. This hot vapor is cooled at the intersection of six laser beams in a region in which a pair of copper coils produces a spatially varying magnetic field. The cooled, slowed atoms are then accelerated using another laser beam toward the trap chip. Ionizing and ion cooling lasers are applied in the trap location, creating and cooling an ion there. Trapping fields are produced below the chip by applying electric fields to the patterned electrodes on its surface. Individual ions trapped in this way can be used for quantum information processing experiments, with the ultimate goal being the development of a quantum computer based on this technology. 